Well, good evening, friends and neighbors. Uh, William Ferguson here from Sugarland, Fort Bend County, Texas, and I am here with just one more video. Guys, you've been great. You've shared and shared and shared. You've uh, apparently watched more than once, and I am going to try to sum up all the work that's being done for you because I can assure you all of the things you see in front of me and all the videos that I have been making is literally for you. Um, I already know where I stand on the park and mobility bonds. I personally don't want to see our community in any more debt than we already are. And when I look at these projects, I certainly don't want to be in debt regarding these particular projects. So what I want to do tonight is I want to remind you of a couple of things. One, always watch and share because we have truly, you and I, have done a great job motivating other people to get involved, to read, to research on their own. And to my surprise, I get great emails. I get great messages. I've had a couple of people that were not so happy, but to be candid with you, they kind of like spending other people's money, and I don't. So I just want to take a few minutes to let you know and remind you that on the 23rd, which is Monday, October 23rd, it is the first day of early voting. And then the election day is November 7th. So we don't have much time left. You've got to get the word out for people to dig in and get involved. So what I have in front of me tonight is a ton of stuff. I have a ton of, I have campaign finance reports, I have political action committee reports, I have uh, different mailers, I have my laptops going with a ton of data. So I think what's important is we need to identify what are we talking about here. Well there are two propositions on your ballot. If you live in Fort Bend County, there are two propositions related to uh, Fort Bend County bonds. One is a mobility bond, and you're going to hear a ton about mobility bond. It's 712 million dollars. I know. Don't don't lose it yet. Stick with me. 712 million dollars. And then there is a park bond. That is Proposition B, which is 153 million dollars. So that combined is 865 million 630 thousand dollars when you see the exact details. And what I've done tonight is I've taken just a couple of minutes to pick up some of the highlights that uh, the county uh, staff has been trying to deliver to us. I've attended, I think, five or six of their meetings. I had one today at the uh, Fort Bend Chamber of Commerce. I'll tell you about that in a moment. But in these meetings, these informative meetings, they're intended to be information to you, but also they were intended to have a question and answer. Well, that part doesn't happen. Um, I believe it doesn't happen because they don't really have the answers. And you would have to watch them to see what I mean. Um, I try to stay quiet. Uh, in fact, today I asked a question that they certainly couldn't answer. And the question was simply this, what is it going to cost us individually? They don't have an answer. They haven't had an answer through any meeting. Uh, I was directed today to speak to, I believe he's the Director of Finance. Uh, I can assure you he's not given us that answer in all the meetings that we've attended where he was there. All they say to give you a little peace of mind is they simply say, we're not increasing the current property tax rate. Well, if you guys know anything about government, what that means is as your appraisal goes up at that fixed rate, they're going to continue to collect more and more money at that rate as your appraisal goes up. And what would be beautiful is as your appraisal goes up, they don't need additional money, so that rate would go down. That would be a beautiful thing. The rate goes down as the appraisals go up because they're going to get the same amount of money. But in this case, they're fixing a rate, which by the way, they increase their budget uh, excessively. Establish the 42.5 per 100 rate, and they're saying they're going to hold that rate. Well, historically, they could manage about 75 to 80 million dollars in debt service. At the current time, there's about 1.1 billion dollars in debt, 
and they are trying to explain to us that with the increased appraisal with that fixed rate yes the rate is fixed but you're paying more in taxes because of the appraisal is higher with that increased revenue to the county through taxes um, they are going to be able to increase their debt service from around 75 80 million dollars to as high as 200 million dollars what does that tell me that tells me they're collecting too much in taxes on our properties guys property taxes are already hard enough along with everything else we've got to pay for our medicine our insurance our cars our our mortgages everything that we have in our lives it's just too much and I want to tell you it just made me think of a really off silly story but when I think of too much I want you to think way back you may not remember this day but in 1773 the British government had established a three cent per pound tax on tea and also established a monopoly so the colonists could only pay it because they couldn't get tea from anywhere else because there was a monopoly on it. Well, that three cents and that monopoly was enough that the colonists had had enough and they said no more. No more and they poured it over the side of the ship. And today you and I sit thankfully in the United States of America because of moments like those where the colonists said no more. Well, I'm telling you now, $865,630,000 is my no more mark. We have, we have got to reconsider the size of debt damage that is being done to our county. I'm just letting you know, as a taxpayer, one to another, it is a lot of money, it is a lot of debt. So when you meet with your neighbor who's on a fixed income, maybe it's a senior, maybe it's a single mom, a single dad, um, I'm just telling you, this debt is piling up faster than we can pay it. And just think, on top of it all, what else do you have? You have school taxes. Oh my goodness, school taxes are by far more expensive than our county tax rate at 0.425 per 100. Our city tax in Sugar Land is 0.35 per 100. And then our school taxes are more like 1.1 zero and up per 100. So guys, it is excessively, excessively too much debt. So with all that said, I'm so sorry I digress. Their presentation, I want to use a couple of quick numbers before I let you go. Their presentation says that of the $712 million in mobility bond money, $245 million of that money is on projects that already exist, that are unfinished projects. So I want you to think about that. So of the 712, 245 of the 712 is existing projects, okay? But here's what they say about it. They say it's due to right-of-way costs have gone up 25%. Due to economic pressures that are certainly out of their control, and then due to 35% construction cost increases. Well, no kidding. Those are the same things that are affecting each one of the taxpayers. And remember, this is ad valorem taxes. This is not optional taxes. This is ad valorem taxes. If you want to keep your property, you have to pay your taxes. That's what this is. So I want everybody to understand, and also within the $712 million, $43 million is on road repairs. Well, I'm so sorry, but the county should have already taken road repairs and built it into their budget because they're responsible for those roads. We should not be looking at a bond for $43 million for road repair. Think about it, folks. You're already paying taxes to have your roads. Why should we have to pay more taxes to get the roads fixed? Think about it. This is just a little shell game at times. To decrease a property tax rate, they will pull out what I refer to as a maintenance responsibility so they can decrease it. And then they come back and say, oh, we have this 
we have this issue. Here we go. We have this issue, $43 million that you need to pay for with a bond. Well, it's ad valorem taxes. You don't have a choice. So guys, you're in control here. You have to tell them yes or you have to tell them no. And if you can't afford it, the answer is no. And if you can't afford it, the answer is yes. But remember, when you say yes or no, you are also speaking for your neighbors. So think about the condition of your neighbors as well. So anyhow, I'm going to flip over to one more uh, little graphic that I collected. I think these are kind of important because I want you to know these graphics come from them. Okay, and, and I think that's why we, I, I really want to share this. So I'm going to go back to the mobility bond, the $712 million. So of this bond, $245 million is on existing projects. $43 million is on rehabilitation. $13 million is on pedestrian safety. Okay, I'm not all opposed to that. Uh, $31 million is traffic safety. Um, road improvements all in, and then road improvements, DRU. That totals about $200 million. And then partnerships with city, state, and local is $177 million. Now, I know you're probably thinking, I'm losing him. He's losing me. I don't understand. Well, I want you to hear one. Partnerships with city, state, and local. If your city, and I'm going to use the city of Sugarland for example, if your city is going to match the county bond dollars, that means you will also need to come up with city dollars on top of the $712 million that you're already paying. You'll need to come up with additional millions to cover those dollars. I hope you guys are following me. It's a lot of information. I'm sorry. But all of this is happening quickly. So why is it happening? Well, let me, let me now get ahead of myself. One more thing. So let's talk about the park bonds. Um, in the very first meeting, which was held in a Cinco Ranch, um, uh, Commissioner Morales and uh, County Judge K.B. George were there. And one of the comments that was made in that meeting really shocked me because the, the disappointment I had in their conversation was simply this. They told us in the group that the reason the cities already have parks, the reason the cities already have these fun, you know, pickleball and all this other fun outdoor activities is because the cities have more money. Well, <laughs> we are the cities, right? You and I. If you live in an incorporated area, you made a choice to live in that area. And hey, good for you and good for me, right? So why would that be held against me? And now I have to put a park in an unincorporated area in the county. Why is that my responsibility when I already have a park? That's not my responsibility. The developer of that land needs to manage that park. But what the county wants to do is provide those facilities, those outdoor venues to unincorporated, area, unincorporated areas. Well, that's all fine and well, but that revenue dollar comes from you and I that lives in the city as well. And keep this in mind. If you live in an incorporated city in Fort Bend County, you're not even getting all the services that you're paying for, even in Sugarland, We don't use their police services. We don't use their EMS services. But yet we pay the same rate as someone that does. So just think about that. You have layers and layers and layers of taxes that are poured on you. And so these park bonds are just more of that layer, layer, layer for outdoor venues you already have. And you may say, hey, that's fine. I want to spend my neighbor's money on, on these parks in the middle of somewhere that you'll never go. Maybe it is. That's maybe how you feel. I want you to know I don't feel that way. I don't feel that way at all. Okay. I think that the county needs to work within the county's uh, financial ability. Work in that area, and you might find some, some peaceful, happy ground. But when you're trying to reach out beyond your responsibilities, it's, it's really getting uncomfortable. And, you know, I, I hear the little tagline, it's all about quality of life, quality of life. We want to in, in, improve the quality of life for everyone in the county. Well, that's fine. But listen, folks have made a decision to live in unincorporated areas. 
It may not have pickleball courts or baseball fields or cricket fields or, or whatever it may be. That, that was their choice to move there. Those of us that have chosen to live in cities that have those outdoor venues and facilities, hey, good for us as well, right? The choice is ours. So anyhow, I just want to let you know, guys, this is what's happening. So you got a mobility and you have a park bond, okay? The reason I am 100% without any question in opposition to the park bond is within the park bond, there is a $2.5 million they're taking from you and I. They're going to reach into your pocket and they're going to take it out of your pocket and they're going to grant it, give it to the YMCA, which is a nonprofit. Which, by the way, love the YMCA. I love their song. I love their activities. I love everything. But wait a minute. Why are you going to tax my property? And, and let's never forget, if you don't pay it, you lose your home. Why are you going to take ad valorem taxes from my property and give it as a grant to a nonprofit? And, by the way, you will not have membership access to that YMCA. But they want to take your money and they want to be the, the hero of the day and offer two and a half million dollars of the 16 million that's needed to reopen, to improve and reopen a YMCA. I'm so sorry. Those are ad valorem dollars. Why don't we do something instead? Why don't we, why, don't, why aren't we asked to contribute out of the kindness of our hearts to the YMCA instead of taking it from us? I don't like that and, and I don't think you like that as well. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to summarize. So we're getting flyers in the mail that say, oh, vote yes, vote yes, vote yes. But I always want you to pay attention to these flyers as you get them, because you'll see in usually if this is a credible, reputable flyer, it will literally say who paid for this ad. And in this case, it's a political ad paid for by Keep Fort Bend Moving and the address is out of Richmond, Texas. So whatever ad you get, I want you to look at that, okay? And then I want you to pay attention, do a little fun research and figure out, in this case, who is Keep Fort Bend moving? Well, they should be registered with the state because this is a PAC, a polit political action committee, and it should be registered. Well, I can't find the registration on this, but I did a little research through LinkedIn and other places and I found that this is a group of engineering companies or a engineering company that is formed a pack, and why would they do that? Huh, why would they, why would an engineering company or a survey company or a legal uh, attorney, why, why would any of them do that? Why would they form that? Well, I have that answer for you in case you can't figure it out on your own. <clears throat> I, I did a video recently, campaign finance reports, okay? Campaign finance reports, campaign finance reports. And some of these are 110 pages, I just want you to know. Campaign finance reports, okay? So there's five on the table, plus PACs, okay? Within the campaign finance reports, there are contributions made, legal contributions being made to our county commissioners. Why would they do that? Maybe they just love the county commissioner. The commissioner is just a wonderful person. They're kind, they're sweet, they're giving. They're great leaders. I have no idea, right? But I think I know the answer. <clears throat> what it appears to be, and it's an old term used some time ago. I can't prove it, but I can't disprove it either. And the term is pay to play. So these, unfortunately for these companies, and again, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I'm sorry to the companies that get caught up in this. You want your piece of $865,630,000 in bonds plus all of the other bonds that are out there. I get it. I know what you want. And, and i be candid with you. I don't really blame you. Um, it's all legal. But what they'll do is they'll, they'll offer a contribution. So all you have to do is you simply pull open one of the campaign finance reports and, and you can kind of flip through it and say, oh, engineer, engineer project coordinator, project manager. Wow, okay. Uh, well, I wonder, I wonder why they would care. Oh, by the way, that's a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. And the list goes on and on. I mean, I could do this all night. I don't want to do this all night. This is public information. You can pull it up. Guys, it's all legal. 
why but that should help you understand why a engineering group would offer up flyers saying vote yes do you see what i'm getting at it's your debt and it's ultimately what pays for their services so i would say this to the county commissioners uh, if that's what's going on let's let's stop that okay let's just let's 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 put it out there let's put the the bid out there the bond the, the work needed out there let's let these engineering companies all submit you know their their offer to do the work and those that are most qualified and to be frank with you least expensive you know best qualified least expensive let's give them the work whether they contributed here or not let's simply take a frugal uh, conservative approach to this and pay to play is ugly because what if you're a small company what if you're a what if you're a small minority owned company and you can't pay to play and you may offer great services I want you to have a shot at it right it's only fair let's do that more so today I'll end on this but today we had a lunch and a presentation from the county at the uh, Fort Bend Chamber of Commerce and it was interesting as I went in there and I realized who all the sponsors for the lunches were they were the companies that would benefit they were the engineering companies they were the survey companies they were it's it's sad to me um, these companies shouldn't have to do this um, but for whatever reason they want the attention they get the attention and ultimately they get the work so guys the vote is yours you want more debt or you don't want more debt you want more debt for your neighbors or you don't want more debt for your neighbors. That's what it boils down to, okay? Um, so voting begins October 23rd. It's Monday. And uh, election day is November 7th. Sorry I ran on, but there is so much information here. It's all legal. It's all legal. There is so much information for you to consider here. You can go line item after line item. If you want to. I've done it a million times, and I've looked at them and I went, oh, my gosh. I, I can't even believe most of this stuff's on the table. But love you guys. You are so trusting of your elected officials, your government. You are so trusting. Sometimes it's shocking to me that these sorts of things will be in front of you, and yet you literally find yourselves too busy to engage these meetings, to review this data, and yet, a lot of you will show up and vote on Monday. A lot of you will. And my hope is you're voting wisely. You're educated. Because I can tell you now, you vote yes, you got a lot of debt. You vote no, you're sending them back to the table. It's not like these projects won't ever get done. If they're needed, they're going to get done. But you vote no, they go back to the table and they find a better way. You vote yes, it is what it is. What's laying there? You're giving away two and a half million dollars to a nonprofit, and the list goes on and on. I really, really, really do love you guys. I love Sugarland. I love Fort Bend County. I've been a police officer out here in Fort Bend County since 1992. Absolutely love you guys. I can't do much more than encourage you. So please educate yourself. Please, please, please tell your neighbors, share the video. Sorry it went long, learn how to fast forward, cut out some of it. But I hope you have a super great evening, and I will see you at the polls next week. Let's keep making Fort Bend County a beautiful, beautiful place, because it is my home, and it is your home. So we'll see you guys soon. Bye, y'all.